Hello, everyone. Hi, my name is Eden Eonwuka. I am a relationship and mindset coach certified with the Maxwell Leadership Team and the founder of A Woman and Half. As a result of my communications training, my relationship and mindset coaching for single, married, and divorced women, women rediscover their divine purpose. They begin to attract and enjoy healthier relationships and they heal from soul wounds. I'm also a member of the Forbes Coaches Council. I have corporate experience of over 19 years and I've been coaching professionally for about 10 years. Now, one interesting fact about me is that I have three amazing girls who are my life and I'm reporting live from Houston, Texas, and I am a two-time cancer survivor. So I just want to share for a bit my heart. This is life beyond the breast cancer. Thank you so very much, Dr. Chika, for that wonderful introduction. Thank you, Breast um, Health Angels Foundation, for the work you do. And you'll be hearing the stories of different survivors. So um, I, I belonged to the 4%. There is a 4% who don't have a risk factor, meaning that there's no underlying condition. There's a 4% who are under 40. So you don't even qualify in a sense for mammogram. There is a 4%. Um, when you go to the hospital, they tell you that um, you're not qualified for mammogram. So in a sense, I would have missed every bracket. There was no family history. I was under 40. I didn't have any underlying condition. And I, did, I didn't also have a risk factor. I had just had my children. I just had my twin children. I had three kids in three years. 2016, I've had the best testimony. I became a mother of twins. And just when my kids were about seven months or eight months, I felt a lump in my breast. After, I, I, and immediately I assumed that the lump was from breastfeeding. You know, and to be honest, I almost ignored it. But the, the lump, it was, there was nothing, it was just a funny looking lump. It felt very seedy. You know, very seedy. So I just said, okay, it's, it's almost end of the year. It's October 2016. I'll go check it out. <laughs> I'm glad I did. Went to the doctor and just said, hey, you see, to be honest, I didn't think there was anything wrong. I even took a selfie, like serious, like, like I took a selfie in the doctor's office. I wasn't expecting anything. I just said, I'm sure it's leftover breast milk. They will figure it out. There's no pain. There's nothing. It's just routine. I think it was mostly out of duty because my husband said, ah, let's go check it out. I'm like, yeah, let me get this out of the way. So we check it. There was something about the doctor's eyes. Now, you must get to the point where you not only hear what people say, you must hear what they do not say. I followed the doctor's eye and I saw something in his eye, something that was a quick concern and immediately went. He said, mm, this may be nothing, but I think you should go and see a breast specialist. So that was when the name dropping started. Specialist, I'm like, okay. So I got um, referred to a breast specialist. And the same routine. Ah, I'm sure it's nothing. How old are you? Ah, no, you don't fit the bracket. No, it's nothing. But I saw the same emotions in the doctor's eye. Now, because of the coaching I do, because I'm integrative, we call ourselves integrative coaching. We are trauma-informed. So you are kind of heightened. You are intuitive. So I saw something in the doctor's eye. And that was the very first time. I wasn't afraid, but that was the first time I kind of got a sense that this might be a little serious. This is not a routine. This was the breast specialist now saying to me, I think it may be nothing, um, but I believe you should see, go have a biopsy. There was something about that word that was familiar and scary. I'm like, where have I heard that word? Then I remembered that the word biopsy, I'd heard the word biopsy in cancer adverts. So I quickly Googled it. Trust me, <laughs> when you have a life change, when you have a diagnosis, when you have a hospital back to back, one thing you should not do, please don't put it in the chat, do not Google, like seriously, do not Google. Well, against better judgment, I Googled it. And when I Googled it, I saw it's a test used to eliminate cancer. I'm like, 
Amen. Father, I thank you. I've even crafted the testimony I was going to give. That this was eliminating cancer. Remember the timeline. October 2016, he moved to November. Then by the time it was biopsy, there was no spot. So I took the first available biopsy, January 2nd, 2017. So while people were declaring on how powerful their year is, while people were saying the year I was in the hospital, because in my mind, it was just an annoying inconvenience. I'm like, let's get this out of the way. I'm a new mom going back to work. I want to focus on my career. January 2nd, I went for the biopsy. And I had to do the wait. Every survivor knows the wait. After the biopsy, I had to wait. January 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th. And they kept telling me to come back to the hospital. Again, remember context. I was a new mom. I was in a new office. I didn't want to be that person that was taking permission. So I told them, just give me the result. They actually did insist that they were not going to give me the result. I wasn't expecting anything. Trust me. So I insisted that they should give me the result over the phone and absolve them of every responsibility. And I got the phone call that rocked my world, January 7, 2017. Sorry, Mrs. Onka, to inform you that the biopsy came back for cancer. That is a sentence you do not expect when you are 37. That is a sentence you don't expect when you're a new mom with three kids under three. That is a sentence you don't expect when you just testified that God gave you not one, two beautiful set of twins. And immediately, the first question I asked is, what caused it? I don't understand. There's no family history. There was no family history. And the reason I'm stressing this is because as much as we are telling our stories, I we are every woman. You're going to hear from all of us. We are every woman. We are moms. We are wives. We are professionals. We are torn in different you know, directions by the similitudes of life. And I wondered what caused it. I was healthy. I was a dress size six. I was drinking my water, as they say, minding my business and my business. I didn't have any negative thoughts. I was already in emotional healing because as a coach, I help women heal. So I prided myself as being the encourager. If there was anyone that had the clean energy, it was me. So what went wrong? 